Hi, my name is PK Gulati. I'm the founder of The Assembly. If you're here, you're probably watching an assembly workshop. We do these workshops every week and these are prepared by the assembly team in Dubai. These workshops cover ideas from data sciences, hardware design, automation, robotics, drones, and all the other exponential technologies that can, you can think about. The idea is for us to learn more than what curriculum teaches us. And we are trying to bring people to start working with their own hands with these technologies which have the capacity of changing the world. So welcome to this workshop and learn more about new wonders what you can build. Hey guys, I'm Daipa Intel and welcome back to another workshop. Today we are going to create an AI hand pose estimation using Python, OpenCV and MediaPy. It employs machine learning to infer 21 landmarks of your hand in just a single frame. By the end of the video, you will be able to track all the joints of your hand in real time. Let me introduce you to the assembly. Assembly is a smart lab established back in December 2014 based out of N5. We have done over 300 free workshops. We do mainly three types of workshop. Hack workshop which includes embedded systems, IoT and hardware. Then we have code workshop which includes software project, APIs and framework. Then we have a third type of workshop, data science, advanced topic related to AI machine learning. This today's workshop is a code workshop. Our target audience are the individuals who are here to learn and try new things. You can be a student, professionals or even an entrepreneur. We mainly focus on smart technology and practical application. You can visit us at our forum members.theassembly.ae. You can follow us through our social media channels. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and YouTube. Let's start with today's workshop. Today's workshop, as I've said, is based on AI hand pose estimation. We'll go to the introduction to AI hand pose estimation. Then we will check out the software which we'll be using today. And then we'll move on to our coding. Our coding will be divided into three. We'll install and impose all the dependency required for this workshop. We'll check the detection of the landmarks on our hands. And then at the end, we'll be saving the output images on a desktop. Introduction. Hand pose estimation is a task of finding the joints on your hand from an image or a set of video frames in real time. Software which we'll be using today is Python ideally. Python is a programming language that let us work quickly and integrate system more effectively. The second software we'll be using today is OpenCV. OpenCV is a library of programming functions mainly at real time computer versions. From here we'll get the webcam to get our feedbacks. The libraries we'll be using today are NumPy, Numerical Python. It is a library that provides multi-dimensional array objects. UUID, Universal Unique Identifier is a Python library which helps in generating random objects and strings. Today we'll be using UUID1 which will help us to create and generate new unique IDs. OS, it, in the Python it provides functions of interacting with operating system. At the end, our main library we will be using today is MediaPipe. MediaPipe offers open source platforms and customizable machine learning solutions for live and streaming media. So we'll be using Python IDLE. So we'll start with importing and installing all our dependency. The main library we will be using today is MediaPipe. So let's install that using pip install. Media pipe open CV Python. As I have already installed it in my terminal, so I'm just gonna remove this line and move on to importing all the libraries. So we'll start with importing media pipe as MP. We'll be importing CV2, which is our open CV, and then we'll import numpy, which is numerical Python. Uh, this one is used. Uh, to help us to work with different outputs. Okay. Then we'll be importing UUID. So uh, UUID is for generating unique ident uh, unique uh, strings. So we'll be using this later to save our images using the different names. Then we have 
OS, which is to let the Python work on different operating system. Uh, so now we'll be using the two main components of MediaPy, MP drawing is equal to MP dot solutions or drawing is equal to utils. So uh, this command is mainly used for drawing the utility and the rendering the landmarks. And then we have the second components which is MP hands is equal to MP dot solutions dot hands. Uh, this will be uh, this will get us the hand model which is already uh, there in MediaPy for us to use. And now that we are done with setting our MediaPy, we'll be now moving on to OpenCV. So to let the uh, webcam start, we'll start with cap dot cv two dot video capture capture to zero. Uh, now we have it done with that uh, for uh, setting up the confidence of the landmarks uh, for detecting and then tracking. We'll be using a with command mp hands. Detections. So here we are setting the confidence for the detection uh, on uh, point eight, which is eighty percent, and then for tracking the minimum uh, confidence tracking, I will set it up as point five, which is fifty percent. Okay, here we have an underscore. It's done. We'll start. Now we'll start with a. Uh, using our webcam so while a cap is opened so while uh, we are using our webcam what all should happen would be the next we'll start with uh, getting the output and we are uh, saving it in our frame so return frame so this frame will be our variable where we will read our results from the webcam so read Now that we are done, uh, the in OpenCV, what happens is it's a default uh, color sequence which is saved as uh, GBR, which is green, sorry, which is blue, green, red. So we are gonna change the BGR to RGB. So for that, we'll set as image equal to CV2 dot DC CV2. Hello. I'm gonna set the frame to CV2. What color? So here from BGR, which is blue green green, to RGB. So that's done. And we're gonna set a flag right now so that we can uh, uh, stop the for copying any other images. We'll set the flag here image dot flag dot writables and we'll uh, set this as false writable as false uh, so what mainly happens is whenever your webcam gets a feed uh, it takes in the opposite uh, picture so your right hand is left for them so we're going to use a flip command to flip the area so you can recognize your right and left hand so you'll use a uh, image dot cv2 dot flip so you'll be flipping an image and set as one so we can set this yeah you can uh -huh. so we'll just set flag after this so once uh, we have set the flags, we're gonna get the results and the process of it. So we'll get, we'll save it in results is equal to. So we're gonna process our image. We'll use hands start process process and image. So here we have uh, process our image. Now we're gonna get it back uh, from it. So we're gonna set the flag back to true. So you can use image dot flag dot writables and we'll set as true and now we have to change back the rgb to bgr so we're going to use image cv.2 dot cv ad color and we'll be using the image dot cv2 color 
so here we're gonna use rgb to bgr now that's done uh, now we are going to just print the results so print results uh, now that we are done with our uh, image thing we'll start with our landmass detection so we'll start with if the results dot multi dot landmarks so we are starting loop for uh, rendering our uh, landmarks to the feed which th the computer will receive we'll start with for loop with num and hand results dot multi and landmarks so we'll be uh, using mainly uh, three components on this to generate so we'll use mp drawing command to draw the landmarks on our uh, coordinates landmarks so here we are getting the image which is given to them image then the hand and last we are going to use mp hands dot hands connection so this hand connection is basically the lines which would be uh, connecting your one joint to another till this is the and we can even change and set the color for your uh, uh, tracks which is the lines and the radius which is drawn on your landmark so we can use it by using a drawing spec so drawing spec is the command which is used to draw the colors and uh, change any function which is basically the color thickness and the radius so we'll set the color colors to 121 22 and 76 uh, the thickness we are setting at maybe 2 and the radius of the circle um, circle setting as 4 so this is done this is just for your uh, landmarks so we need twice I'm just gonna copy this again and change our color so we could use 250 this could change as 44 and so this would give you a dark purplish color 250 and change the radius of the circle to 2 now I'll just close this uh, now that you are done with this we will uh, uh, like to get the feed we need to open our new window from um, open CV where you will see your landrax to show that will write do i am show and here you can give any name to your window which would appear so here i'm just writing hand tracking in single columns this would be the frame where we would uh, see the image render so image. Mm, i'll just correct this pen. Uh, now that we have created a window so even to shut it down uh, properly we need to write a command so like if cv2 wait key stem so here i'm just giving a letter q so this would uh, stop our loop and get it out of there and uh, stop the feed and to break out of the loop this break so we're closing all, uh, we're destroying all the windows. So whatever windows is open with this command, it would all shut down. And the drawing specs, we have used drawing specs, so we have to close that as well. So, so before we move on, we check for any mistakes. So you can find a mistake and correct those. So this would be equal to flags would have an S with an Uh, so now we'll just run our program the output screen so as you can see you can see all the landmarks which is detected and it's pretty much smooth as well we'll press q to terminate now for our last part of the coding where we're going to get the output from the open cv and we're going to save the images so for that we need to create a directory we'll start with 
who is God in territory. You can name anything of your file. I'm just here using name of God image. Yes. Image. Through this, uh, you are creating uh, the directory with the name. First, doing, we'll just copy paste the whole thing and paste. Uh, the only difference that we are going to change in the output thing is before the tracking. Yeah. So, we're going to set the path to where the fold or the images after being captured are going to save. So, we'll just use CV2. We're going to write, I am right. OS dot path. So this is where we are gonna set the path. Fine. We need to specify the name of the folder. So here is output image. Then uh, need to uh, specify the type of the format. So we're gonna use a JPC, JPG. So JPG format. Uh, and yes. format just the smaller format okay. uh, now once the image is captured you are supposed to store the images in the folder but the name of the this is where we are going to use UUID uh, library so we are going to create a unique uh, strings for each images Use UUID dot UUID one. And image. Guess that's done. So let's run and see. Um, so we have a dot. So as you can see, I have the images thing, press Q. So we'll check again. So now they are capturing the images. So whatever, it could be even two hands, multi hands. I'm gonna press Q. Now, if you go to the place where you have sore, so you can, uh, so we're gonna go to the same place where your file is. So mine is in download. Download. So as you can see, a folder has been created with output images and it has all the images which which it has one hand and my name is Keenan and today I will show you how to virtually control your mouse with Python using OpenCV, Media Pipe, and AutoPy. And let me give you an overview of today's workshop. This workshop is divided into three sections. First, we're going to take a live feed to track our hand using OpenCV. Then we're going to detect and track hand landmark movements using MediaPipe. Then once we convert the movements into coordinates, we can convert hand movements to mouse movements using AutoPy. Uh, these are the MediaPipe landmarks that we're going to have to use as reference. We will uh, come back to this later once, once we start the coding. AutoPy is a simple cross-platform GUI automation library. It has a few key functions like controlling the mouse, keyboard, finding colors, bitmaps on screen, and displaying alerts. Now let's get started with the coding. All right, before we get into the coding, uh, we need to install a few packages. So we go to do that, we go into File, Settings, Python Interpreter, and Add. Here we need to add uh, OpenCV dash python then we need to add media pipe and lastly we need to add autopy i've already installed them so i'm not going to do that um, next we need to import them i've already done that as you can see now you can also see that i have a bit of pre-written code uh, this uh, uh, tracks our hand landmarks uh, we've already done a workshop explaining how the landmark works and if you're interested you can watch that video but for now, I'll just give you a brief overview of the code that is already there. Uh, so on line six, you can see that we have our capture with OpenCV. This captures our webcam. 
Then we have the init hand. Uh, this initializes media pipe. Then we feed init hand to main hand. Uh, and this allows us to add a few arguments uh, for our hand tracking, uh, like how many hands we're going to be using, the minimum detection and tracking confidence, and a few other arguments. For the sake of this workshop, we are setting the min uh, tracking and detection to 0 0.8. Uh, then we have the media pipe uh, drawing utils. This essentially allows us to have connections between each finger and their indexes. Next, we have a method called called hand landmarks. Here we feed our live image, which is here in this while true loop. This while true loop takes uh, each frame of our webcam, uh, converts it from BGR to RGB, and then feeds it to the method. In this method, we have a default uh, list of uh, values. Uh, we don't really need the default values. We can just have the variable. Um, then what we have is the tracking positions. This allows us to track, uh, allows us to process the video input. Then what we do is we check um, if the if we are tracking anything, uh, and it stores it into this variable. So if it's true, if we are tracking anything, we go into a for loop. And over here is where we print out uh, each of the landmark uh, positions. Um, over here we also take the height, width, and channel of the a window image and then we have the center of the x value and the center of the y value all of this is stored in the landmark um, list and we return that value into the while true and that is it for the pre-written code so let's begin with the coding all right now that we have the landmarks um, and we can run the code and it shows our landmarks correctly as you can see it shows all the landmarks correctly what we need to do now is uh, we need to check if each of these fingers are up. Now, the reason we do this is so that we can use a different combinations of fingers which are up and which are down to uh, initiate a mouse move function or a mouse click function. So to do that, we'll have to make a, a function called def uh, fingers, we can call it. And then what we need to do is we're going to have to feed this, this landmark list. So what we can say is we can just feed this land marks and then we can start now what we need to do is uh we're going to store um each of these five fingers uh if it's up we store it as one if it's down we store it as zero and we can store all of this in a list so what we can do is have a variable called finger tips and then we equal that to an empty uh list then what we do is um we need to have tip ids so tip IDs and we set that equal to four, four, eight, twelve, sixteen, and twenty. Now in the presentation I showed you earlier, we saw that the landmark positions were four, eight, twelve, sixteen, and twenty. And that's why we're storing this. So we can check each of these indexes rather than checking all the indexes on our hand. Now what we need to do is since the thumb has one less joint, we need to check the thumb is lower than the first joint. Um, and if it is, then we return a zero. So what we do is if land marks of tip IDs of zero, and we get its first value, and we check if it's greater than the land marks of tip IDs again and then we want to do a zero uh, but minus one so instead of four we get three so this is four we'll get three um, and then we want the value of one now what we do is if it meets our criteria we do finger tips dot append and then what we want to do is append one because it is up if it's down we want to append zero so what we do is one and then else we do finger tips dot append zero perfect now we have that order so this will only check for the thumb so let's write that in the comment so this just checks for thumb 
Now to check for the other fingers, we can run it through a for loop. So we do that by having for ID in range of one to five. So this will skip the first one and go to the, from the first, uh, from the second index to the last index. So for ID in range of one to five, what we do is if, so we can just copy this command that we had here. And what we do is instead of zero, we run ID to it and we change one to two and we change the direction of the greater symbol. And then we, we keep this as minus three and two. This will check to see if the tips of the fingers, each of these four fingers are higher than its corresponding joints. If it's down, we will append zero. And if it's one, it will append one. If it's high, it will append one. Now, all we need to do is return this value. So we can say return and then finger tips. So this will um, return an, uh, a list of five values, all ranging between zero and one. Now, once we have that, what we can do is over here, we can say uh, fingers is equal to fingers of LM list. So we feed in our landmarks, which is LM list, and we feed it here. Now to check if it's printing correctly, what we can do is print finger, and then we can run the program. So we'll just run it. Oh, as you see, we have an issue here. Um, let's check what that is. Okay, so our issue is these this bracket. We have to take it here and move it uh, a few positions to the left. And just make sure all of the brackets are correct. Um, we have the same issue here. So we just take that and move it a few positions to the left. And that is correct. Okay. Now what we can do is run the program again. Uh, we have uh, an index out of range. Uh, and the reason that is, is because it doesn't detect any hands. So to counter that, since we are returning a landmark list without any default values, what we need to do is put it into an if condition. So if L, the length of LM list is not equal to zero, then only do we initiate this and then we can print it likewise. Now what we can do is run the program and hopefully it runs without any issues. And as you can see, my camera is showing up. So what will happen is once I put my fingers in the view of my webcam, it will show us the landmarks and on the console, it will show us a bunch of ones uh, that will indicate all my fingers are up. And as we move forward with each of my fingers, uh, it will uh, change the, the array list. So here, as you can see, I have all ones because my fingers are up. If I close my thumb, you can see it turns to zero. And if I open it back up, it turns back to one again. So we can try the same thing with other fingers. As you can see, if I do with my pointer finger, it turns to zero. Then if I do with my middle finger, it turns to zero. Uh, my ring finger, it turns to zero and my pinky, it turns to zero. Okay, perfect. Now that we can see that all our fingers are being properly detected if they are higher or lower. Okay, now that we are able to track which fingers are up and which are down, we can add a uh, remote functionality to this. Now we can check uh, each of the indexes or each of the fingers to in combination uh, to initiate different functions. So for uh, the fingers, we can check if finger of one is equal to zero or is equal to one. So we're checking if our pointer finger is, is up and um, our middle finger, which is finger two is down. So that's equal to zero. Uh, what we can do then is we can have a, a quick print statement. So we can say uh, print test uh, for pointer and we can have another if function um, that checks if um, let's say the thumb is up so what we can do is if finger 
of 0 is equal to 1 and uh, finger of 1 is equal to 0. We can print a test statement. So test for thumb. So the reason we're doing this is we're going to be using our pointer finger to move our mouse. Uh, and then to initiate a click function, we're going to close our pointer finger and open our thumb. So this will be considered as a click and this will be considered as move. So what we do is we just run, run the program and check if our print statements work correctly. So you can see the camera is showing and now if we have our fingers, if I have my middle finger down and my pointer finger up, it should print. So as you can see, it works. We can have an if statement for all the other fingers, but uh, it's not really feasible to have that. We can this works perfectly fine. So what we can do is if we have a pointer finger up. It shows that our pointer finger is up as one and we print the test uh, print function. And then we can now check for the thumb. As you can see, it's printing for thumb. So all of these if functions are working. Perfect. Now what we need to do is we need to uh, connect this with our uh, autopy. Uh, the autopy, we can use the mouse functions. So, but before that, we need to actually get our coordinates done correctly. Otherwise, our coordinates are not going to match properly with our uh, desktop screen. So to do that, we can have an x3 value. So x3 is equal to, and before that, we also need to import numpy. So we do import numpy. This should be automatically installed with uh, some of our other packages. So we come here to x3 and then we say numpy dot interp. And what we have to do is x1, that was x1 value. And uh, before that, we also need to store all our x values. So we can say x1 comma y1 is equal to lm list of eight. So we're getting our index finger. So this is four, this is eight, 16, uh, 12, 16, and 20. So we're getting our pointer finger and then we're getting the from the x values. So we do that and then we do x2 comma y2 and then we store that for lm list of 12 which is our middle finger and then we say one and call so we get the x and y values appropriately now what we need to do is inside our x3 we have to feed it x1 comma and over here we have to give 75 and our dimensions of our screen so that'll be 640 and then we have comma zero now what we also need to do is this this function should uh, convert our relative um, 640 by 480 screen relative to our 1080 by 920 screen but we don't have those values yet so the way we can do that is uh, we can make a variable and we can say windows screen and we can say oh sorry not windows screen with screen and height uh, height of our screen so height screen is equal to and then we can use autopy here to, to get our uh, dimensions of our desktop screen. So we say auto pi dot screen dot size. And this will output uh, a 1920 by 1080 aspect ratio. All right. Now with that, we can say in our X3 value, we can feed, feed it, so we can say zero, to our width of our screen, and that should work perfectly fine. We do the same thing for Y3, so all we can do is copy that line down, and we change this to Y3, Y1, and changes to 480 
and 0 to our hydroxyl. So that should work perfectly fine. But the thing is, we need to reduce the size of our 640 by 480 screen so that we don't, so it properly detects when we go to each of the ends of our screen. So to do that, we can just minus 75 from that. And that will reduce the uh, aspect ratio of our uh, webcam screen. So we can move all of this here. And once we have this information, what we can do is we can Okay, so now we have our x3 and y3 values. So what we can do is we can say auto pi, auto pi dot mouse dot move. And in this, we're going to have to feed our um, x3 values, x3 and y3. And we can do the same thing um, for the other if function. So here we say if, if our thumb is out and our in our pointer finger is is down, we can click. So we do that by saying autopy dot mouse dot click, and then uh, it by default it will do a, a left click function. So let's test this out. Now we run the program. Hopefully we don't have any issues. Okay. As you can see, our webcam has a 640 uh, by 480 and it tracks my fingers. Now, if I have the pointer finger, we can see that my mouse is moving. And if I go to the uh, minimize button and I have my thumb, it will, it should click. Now, as you can see, it's a little more difficult Uh, because it's it's quite jittery so I have a way of fixing that so we do that by having our current values of our x and y position and previous values of our x and y position. so we need to first set up the variables for that so we go up and we say um, previous x value comma previous y values and we set those uh, to a default initial value of zero and we do the same thing with a current x value and a current y value and we set that to zero now that we have oh sorry i need to change this to center of a uh, current of y and now that we have that we can um, set these up to have a much smoother transition while we are moving the mouse to do this we need to say a current x value is equal to um, our previous x value and you add that to our x3, x3, and we minus the previous x value from that. And to smoothen out the transition, we can give it a, a number between one to 10. For this case of the workshop, we're putting it seven. And then all we can do is now just copy that line down and change this to the current y value previous y value, y3 value, and previous y value. And instead of feeding our x3 and y3, we feed our cx and our cy values. Uh, one more thing to note is that when I move right, it moves right as well, and it's not quite intuitive. So we want to invert that. To invert it, all we have to do is take our window screen and minus that from our x value. So now uh, the function will be slightly inverted. And after this, what we need to do is our previous x and y values will be set to what is current. So when we um, loop for the next set of locations, the uh, values of the previous x and y coordinates are uh, recorded. So we say px is equal to cx and py is equal to cy. All right, and that should work uh, fine. Now what we can do is run the program. And once again,
once we get the screen, we can see that we get all the ones. And then as soon as I have my pointer, you can see that it is moving perfectly and very smooth without any of the jittering. So let's try to see if our thumb can work now. As you can see, it's still quite difficult to do that. Let's have it slightly up. And as you can see, our thumb clicks uh, and closes the screen. Now we can go all the way down. As you can see, it's quite difficult to do that. So let me just open the screen. So here you go. Now, if we try to, let's try to close the program with this. So we go all the way to the end and then we click. Go all the way to the end. And then we click. So as you can see, we're still struggling. So what we can do is in the um, if function, what we can check is if our index finger is up and our finger is, this will stop us from moving our finger down and the mouse moving down with us as well. Let's give this another try. As you can see, our mouse is working. Our finger is working perfectly fine. Let's try to stop the program with a quick. Perfect. As you can see, our program stopped running, uh, which means our click function got uh, was initiated. To recap this workshop, we learned how to track and detect landmarks on a person's hand using OpenCV and MediaPy. We also learn how to obtain the coordinates of these landmarks and use that information to figure out if a person's fingers are up or down. And based on that information, we initiate a mouse move function or a mouse click function using AutoPy. And that concludes our workshop. Thank you for watching our video. If you like the video, do share, subscribe to our channel for more upcoming video. Stay connected and follow us on our different social media channel. You will find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and YouTube.